Listen on up. Somebody got something to say. Hey, friends, and well, let me be honest. Probably uh, before this video is over, some of you will consider me as an enemy. Um, but I wanted to share a couple minutes about my thoughts, not only on the tragedies that we have been experiencing um, over these past months and especially these last couple of days with the shootings of our black men. But what I'm coming to learn over my 23 year journey of being a white man, living and ministering amongst my black family here in several inner cities of Chicago. And I'm, I'm going to speak very black and white because, let's be honest, it's a black and white issue. Um, I, I want to take you to the book of Exodus, um, chapter 1, and I wanted to share a little bit of what took place prior to the rise of Moses. Um, when I read that, it talked about that the Pharaoh um, became concerned and very um, fearful that the Hebrew slaves were growing in number and Whoa. in power. Whoa. So in order to maintain their oppression, um, he put upon them great labor. He put upon the Hebrew slaves cruelty Whoa. to keep them down. However, they still grew. And so he brought together some midwives and he instructed them that when a Hebrew boy was born, kill him. Well, these midwives did not follow and the Hebrew slaves continued to grow. Eventually, the Pharaoh became so hatred and, and, uh, towards those Hebrew slaves that he made a decree. He put out an order that male baby boys Hebrew slaves were to be killed by casting them into the Nile River. Let's look at America. We brought blacks into this country as slaves. No, you found us here. We never intended them to be anything other than a slave. Right. But they began to grow in number and in power, and eventually they fought their way to some freedom. Yeah, so. So we became even more cruel. And to keep our black Americans down, we lynched. But yet they rose. So then we used the welfare system, the criminal justice system, to, to keep them down, to contain them, to destroy them. But yet they rose and they're rising. Then we built prisons and jails to hold them. Yet, they rose. And so now, we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end. Sending out a decree. Kill him. Bang. So until we admit that when we wrote this Constitution that all men are created equal, that we never intended to include our black brothers and sisters, our nation may end up facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. Whoa. So I'm going to say this to my white fellow Americans. Uh oh that the bloodshed that is on its way is not on the hands of our fellow black Americans, Dang. but is on our hands. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. Whoa. We are the ones that are refusing to acknowledge that we do not value our black brothers and sisters, as equal individuals or equal Americans as us white. We're not equal. 
And to my black brothers and sisters, the racial issues, as I've said, have been there from the very foundation. But why do we see it more? Because there's a shifting. See, us white men have been at the head since the foundation. But we've had a black president. Foundation and of you what? Know, we've done everything in our power to keep him from really changing things. Foundation of what? Do you see how far they go back? These people have a <laughs> complete memory loss prior to the foundation of this corporation owned by a corporation. They have a complete brain fart. And they say, man, we've been in control since the foundation. <laughs> you see the hijack? Now he's trying to come off like some honest guy. And look, man, I've lived around black people for 30 years. If it goes down, just don't hurt me. But then he says he brought you here. And by saying he brought you here, he then has land title ownership over you. Is he trying to give you back your land? But he's calling you God's people. And then he's calling you equal. What page of any part of what you're reading says that the children of the Most High are equal to anything and anybody? There's a covenant with the children. A covenant with the children. And those that have been destroying the children have only destroyed themselves by covenant, by order. Now, can everyone play along? Yeah, but they have to play by the rules. And the rules are <laughs> put no other power before your power. Now, see, that is supposed to rest in the heart of the children. But they have put other powers before their power. And now they have paid their dues and did their bid. And they know you didn't bring them over here from Africa. They know you don't have land rights and land titles and ownership over them anywhere. But he knows one thing. He knows one thing. Listen up. Now we have another minority rising to the top, a white female. What does that say? Those of us who are white men who have been at the head are now starting to see and fear that we are going to become the tail. And we know what we've done to you. Whoa. And so now we're fearful that you're going to do to us what we have done to you. Bang. But I will say this. I've lived in a black community for 23 years. Uh oh. I've never been treated the way that this country has treated my black Americans. So I call out my white Americans to say we better heed, repent, acknowledge, and change. Because if we don't, I just want to again say this. The bloodshed that we will experience is on our hands, not the hands of our fellow black Americans. I welcome your comments. I welcome your feedback. Hit me up on Facebook or go to my webpage at www.studio2911.org. Again, that's studio2911.org. I don't necessarily know the answer except for us white Americans need to repent, acknowledge the lies that we have taught, acknowledge our value system of equality. It is not here and it does not include our black brothers and sisters. And we need to change and we need to change now. Thanks for your time. Bless you. Love. What is love? 
Love is listening. You love your your wife, you love your husband because you listen. You love your your creator because you listen. Can we love everybody without loving ourselves? And it's not the first step to loving yourself, knowing yourself. And are we just now getting to know ourselves again? And these people expect us to love everybody, but they won't help us love ourselves. They won't even help us know ourselves. So you see the hypocrisy, but they don't understand. They're only looking out for themselves and their own fears. What did he say? What do they fear the most? That he that leadeth into captivity will go into captivity.